Welcome to episode four. This one's going to be a fun one. We're going to talk about cameras, camera technology, dynamic range. We're going to explain all the te technical capabilities. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about dynamic range. We're going to uh, expand upon the technical. <laughs> Suck a duck. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode four. It's going to be a fun one. Check it out. We're talking about cameras, camera phones. We're going to have a brand new segment that uh, it has the wheel of death, I guess is what we're calling it. So stay tuned and don't miss out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this was not my third attempt. <laughs> It's a great episode. Just watch it. <laughs> That's my drum roll. <laughs> Just stinking it up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Welcome you, to TriFlix Cast. We are professional videographers and photographers talking about business practices, tech, and a uh, little bit of fun sprinkled in on top. And editors. Uh, yeah, and today, and editor. One uh, editor. <laughs> I'm Cole. Editor. I'm the producer around these parts. Uh, to my right is Tristan. I'm the director. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and then next to him is I'm Daniel. I'm the editor. Nice. And I'm David. I'm just a contractor. <laughs> That's it. And don't forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I have power beyond your imagination. Yes. And somehow together we run a media company called Triflix based out of Columbus, Indiana. Yeah, somehow. Together. Somehow we're running this ship. It's because I make you guys look so iceberg. good. Huh? It's because I make you guys look so good. It's true. You do that. It is true. That's part you of it. It is true. Not this podcast, though. <laughs> yeah. Not this podcast. <laughs> just me. Just me. That is true. It is you. A lot of editors. <laughs> Okay, let's get Excellent. started with some news. Uh, today's story is not such an odd one, hmm. uh, but I thought it was it was newsworthy. I'm already well, obviously, because it was in the news. But <laughs> you're already well, not under, not over, <laughs> just whelmed. completely sated. So I'm not going to have you guess. I'm okay. just going to come out and tell you. I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, Kanye West is buying Parlor. Yay! You guys, are you guys Which familiar? One is I don't know what Parler is. So Parler was the um, overly conservative free speech app that came out. That's right. That was supposed to relinquish the chains of which Meta have put upon <laughs> us oppressed people. Yeah. It's, and then really it got banned cool. on every platform. Yeah. Meta's like, they think, won't let you go on and talk about your divorce and your mm -hmm. kids. So this is a new platform. They, Th they will. They just... They You're talking want, about Facebook? Are we, why else would Kanye buy it? I thought he was buying it so he could go on a platform and not get banned <laughs> oh, okay, when he complains sorry. about his divorce and his kids. On Twitter? <laughs> He's just buying his own platform. I think he did. Yeah. He that, it wasn't an indefinite, right? No, or, it was until he said, I'm sorry, and, and, uh, oh. and acknowledged that he won't keep making well, weird comments about his uh, rel past relationship. Anti-Semitism type stuff. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Kanye? Bad. Yeah. That's what, that was the final straw. That's right. Uh, that was so, it. yeah. Huh. So, Elon owns Twitter, or going to own Twitter. Working on it. Um, Mr. Former President has his Truth, Truth. Mobile. <laughs> and now Kanye <laughs> West has Parlor. It's just the battle of the celebs. And that's why I wanted to bring this up, because crazy. I just you can't make this stuff up. Where do you think Joe Rogan's going to go since he's friends with all of them? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> he's I gonna, don't know if he's, he's friends gonna, he, with okay, all. I think he's going to start his own social media platform and call it Rogue. <laughs> Ooh. We're all going Rogue. Yeah. That'd be cool. He should really spon get sponsored by Rogaine, but... And then he just... Rogan. He pulls, Joe Rogan. He pulls everything from Spotify, <laughs> throws it all on his platform. Ooh. Yeah. He'd have so many followers go with him just for his podcast alone. He would. I think he's pretty yeah. well locked into Spotify. Spotify's That's pretty fair. much it's come out... It's got a contract. To, yeah. they, well, they pretty yeah. much come out and said, like, we'll pay you whatever it takes to keep you. Mm. Nice. Because right, the original for Spotify. Well, the original deal was like a hundred million, and then they came out later that it might have been two hundred, and then this whole thing happened where I think it was it was some I think it was 
Fox News. Somebody that like owned them, that owned another network. They were trying to get him to come to that instead of Spotify. And Spotify upped the ante. They're like, nah. Yeah. Because they just wow. have more money wow. than they know what to do with. That's so cool because that's basically what happened to us <laughs> with our podcast. Huh. Yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. We're Spotify exclusive now, right? Yeah. Oh, we're, wow. Spotify exclusive? we're not. We're not. Okay. Yeah, I was like, what? I was going to say, like, we're this platform happen? agnostic. We're on everything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're on everything. We're all, we have every single thing <laughs> flowing through our veins. We have the Spotify in our veins. We have the iTunes. We're letting them all. Google. iTunes. You're dating yourself it, there. Yeah. Is it not called iTunes anymore? No. Ah, it's just Apple Podcasts. I don't use it. No. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention, I'm the login for our company on there. I know. Oh, and yeah. I keep getting emails that say action now, and I don't know what to do with them. That's awesome. They're a couple months old. That's good to know. Yeah. So if this is still on... <laughs> I don't know what so. to do, but it says action now. <laughs> I, I I'm just completely lost. <laughs> I hope that if you're listening to this, it's still working on Apple Podcasts. Just if like not, mid, let me know. Mid-listen, it just cuts out. <laughs> action yeah. action required was not submitted. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I think this Words is some, pretty some craziness that uh, all these billionaires... Yeah. Maybe one day we'll get that big where... Uh, they People said, think they could buy us out. I hope so. They said they, that there are no terms that are in the public yet, but they've raised $56 million. Okay. Um, and I guess, you know, they said Kanye's worth two bill. Hmm. Yeah. Is a double-edged sense. sword trying to be associated with him? Well, He's, I know. And I just, I just, the whole, I don't even know, is it back? I didn't think Parler was back on the... I don't know. Well, I got uh, apps on, on my platform. phone. I got apps on my phone that you can't get on the store. Well, like yeah, Flappy but you got Bird. Android. You can't do that on iPhone? No. No, man. That's why lawsuits. <laughs> oh, wow. That's you, you, really dumb. You can't sideload. That's so dumb. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's my you phone. can't just go on and pull an APK and put it on. You can't. You have to jailbreak your phone to do that. Yep. Well, then that just Void your deterred board. every reason I was going to switch to iPhone. Yeah, no, you can't. What you are you going to do? What apps? Yeah, thank you. What apps? What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of podcast are we doing today? Really? What about it? Oh, I don't know. I just... Oh, well, we got the bleep button. Uh, I mean, I'm married. There's apps for things outside of just Snapchat. Okay. And you can do a lot of things <laughs> and a lot of apps. And yeah, they're... but why do you need to sideload them? Because they got removed from the Android store. <laughs> yeah, they're probably still on iOS. They, I think that it is still on iOS. I don't know how they got around it, but it's still over there. It's not on Android. They got pulled. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, that's all, all right. that's all I want to know about that. Yeah. <laughs> I really hate to follow this up with the sponsor segment, but we're going to. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of uh, companies that chill for uh, podcasts and all that. <laughs> we'll find a way to make that not seem horrible. Yeah, it's not horrible. It's all good. I he's, love he's a actually, married, he's We a all married enjoyed man. it. He's just trying to keep the spark <laughs> yeah. alive. Mary, married people and sinners know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Wow, I'm trying to get away and from it. We of, keep going back in. Well, you know what? <laughs> hey, no, I've got the perfect thing, David, okay? Yeah. Hear me out. So when this whole horrible app thing blows up in his face yeah. and he ends up on the on the curb with his bags packed and his, his yep. wife locking the door, um, there is free counseling <laughs> offered at oh Coffeehouse 5. So That's one he, of my favorite parts about it. He can get, he can get counseled <laughs> to help him with his I'm instability. getting counseled. You know, if he's like falling asleep because of his late nights, he can get a nice cup of joe. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And he'll, he can bring bring in his husky mug that he forgot to wash. I'm so he much more have to hope. wash it. You have so much more hope? I have so much more hope after hearing about Coffee House 5 located in Franklin, <laughs> Indiana and Greenwood, Indiana. And, and soon to be Bargersville. And soon to be there Bargersville, you Indiana. You're Rereading oh the ad. <laughs> uh, I've only had some more official way of hearing it. <laughs> yeah, so we are uh, we're still drinking the uh, Nicaraguan um, coffee, mm-hmm. and pretty good. I believe we should be switching maybe by the next episode because the holiday blend should be making its oh. way out. Man, we I'm need to get through this that. more. I, yeah, right. So we need to have more podcasts so we can drink what, all this what coffee. What holiday is it? Does it taste more like Thanksgiving or Christmas? It's a blend, so it tastes like Christmas and Thanksgiving <laughs> together. Hanukkah! <laughs> yes, Hanukkah it's, blend. it's all of them the mixed Hanukkah together. <laughs> what does Hanukkah taste like? 12 days, right? 12, <laughs> That's 12, 12 days. days of Christmas. It's 8 yeah. days of Hanukkah. <laughs> yeah. <Twelve. laughs> 1 over 50. Camels. Um, camel, camel, camel. Oh my gosh. Okay. 
David, start us off with this we ad. We are rolling with Coffee House 5 with locations in Franklin and Greenwood and soon a third in Bargersville. Whoop, whoop. Coffee House 5 is Johnson County's premier independent coffee shop to relax, study, or meet friends around great coffee and great food Monday through Saturday. Whether it's a handcrafted espresso or a single origin pour over, you'll enjoy the freshest, smoothest coffee, coffee possible roasted in-house at their Franklin location using a unique airbed roast process and don't forget to pair your coffee with a ham and cheddar scone biscuits and gravy made Yummy. with their award-winning parmesan chive biscuit or any of their other pastries and sandwiches prepared in their franklin kitchen using family recipes in a style they call midwest comfort food mm. but as if that is not enough to get your attention sirs and ladies uh, uh coffee house <laughs> five is a for benefit coffee house all profits mm. are invested in building a stronger community through their support of local mental health services Services, Tristan, oh, yes. which you can read more about on their website, coffeehouse5.com. So the next time you're in Franklin or Greenwood and soon Bargersville, stop by Coffee House 5 yeah. for all your coffee, food, and counseling needs. I will oh. say, non-ad related, Coffee House 5 coffee is the first thing I brewed for Tristan, and he tasted it independently, off camera, yeah. in the middle of the week. Which is... No reason to like it. And he said, that's not bad. I did <laughs> say that. I, I just said big. it. Oh, just bad. It was That's good. not bad at all. He doesn't like coffee. He does guys. not like coffee. No, but this stuff. It's a shame. It's very different. It's palpable. <laughs> it's palpable. For a non-coffee drinker. <laughs> For a non-coffee drinker, even they can admit it's pretty good. I think that says a lot, just saying. Yeah. 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 A lot. yeah it's not every <laughs> yeah. day. He drinks, he drinks water and maybe some soapy stuff. From some time soapy time. water as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now bean water. Now some bean water. Yeah, yeah bean water. Sorry, yeah, coffee You're bean water. Bean juice. And bean they're technically water. not beans. Tec- so, they're, that's I don't know. Yeah. What are beans? They? They're uh, technically a fruit. Fruit water? So technically this is just a smoothie. It's a juice. Uh, that's bean. debatable. It's more like a... More you juice. have to add ice. <laughs> I was going to say, I think a smoothie needs ice. <laughs> okay, then yeah. a frappe is a smoothie. Ice coffee. Yeah, yeah, that's a true smoothie. You call, don't, a, don't, you call it a frappe? Frap. I just call it a frap. Call frap. it a Versailles. It's rails. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so we're trying to reel this thing in, everyone. Just, just, just for the the sanity of our listeners yeah. um, and me. slash followers. <laughs> We're we're gonna try to keep these episodes. Uh, we're gonna we're, we're trying to be very uh, structured <laughs> to a certain degree. I can't even get it out, <laughs> this is, which is fantastic. But I'm only gonna explain <laughs> it once, so I won't have to do it again. Yeah, uh, this is we're gonna try to just do a single topic with, and then maybe we'll branch off. Um, yeah. Not maybe, but we will. So <laughs> we have lots to talk about. And we do. We we'll always find great things in between those to talk about. Yeah. So when I put four topics on a list, we normally cannot cannot <laughs> we can't get through all of them. So. And we go over by the time we, we even go over. Yeah. So, so yeah. if you've been making it through the hour and a half, hour and 45 minute long podcast, the optimal bless length you. for one. Seriously, bless yes. you. Like, yes. Nobody expects you to I, do that. I don't know. <laughs> comment. Comment. Maybe you guys like that kind of thing. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, that's true. I mean, leave us a comment. If you do like yeah. it, we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep it going. Otherwise, we're going to aim for an hour. Next thing you know, we're going to be doing the three hour Rogan cast. Just, oh, yeah. We don't even care anymore. Goes Goes bathroom a, breaks throughout. Edit, David. Yep. Ah. Uh, it's not that I, bad. I still want to do like a live podcast one time. We just need to make sure we have better restraint. We're going to do it. Mm. <laughs> we have sed- plenty of restraint. <laughs> I'm just going to be sedated in the corner, just kind of <laughs> drooling. <laughs> All right, just make sure it doesn't get too hyper over there. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, t- today we're going to talk about... Uh, I don't know. Today we're going to talk Words. about... Uh, camera stuff because yeah. we are photographers and videographers, which is awesome. Wow! And we have had a th- we've had a thing come up a lot recently, and we get compared all the time. At least our our media gets compared all the time to cell phone cameras. Mm, yeah. This is something that's plagued us. I know we've talked about it before, but we're going to dive into some of the technical things and our thoughts on this because it's not all bad. I don't want to I don't want to make it sound like this is one of those things where I'm just gonna. Uh, bad mouth it the whole time and tell you that you have to use a professional company that has mm-hmm. very professional high end expensive yeah. gear. We would never shoot mm-hmm. on a cell phone though. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not saying that either. So <laughs> Tristan might not, <laughs> but I do all the time. They're too, yeah. they're too intimidating. Everything, everything has has a place. So yeah. 
one of the main things we're going to talk about today is dynamic range. And I'd really like for Daniel to explain this. <laughs> dynamic range. Yeah, dynamic no wrong answers. Uh, yeah. I, I, would, I would love to know. They've me all day about this stuff. Yeah, so. I would like to know what you, what you think it is. My understanding of dynamic range is having a good depth of field, which requires the proper settings on your camera or even your phone. Um, just What's depth of field? Fail. Depth of field. I'm failing. Yes. Okay. I want to know what depth of field is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sure. If you would like to explain yeah. depth of field, go ahead and then oh, I will gosh. come back in. Uh, is that where you, you guys went wrong? take it? You Maybe guys take that is it. not where we. <laughs> this is gonna yeah. keep I mean, going wrong if you let me keep no, talking. No, we didn't bring you on here to humiliate you. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I do want to know what depth of field is now. What if What if I was listening to this podcast? No, that's so what I'm I don't saying. Know what it is. No. So I will say. Go for it. A great way for people to learn is like the student teacher method, where somebody there's an expert. And then there's someone who maybe isn't all too familiar. And using those two things, the the student can be like the listener, and they can ask the questions, they can take the place, and they can be someone they can relate to. And we have some experts in the room, too. Exactly. And so this is for everyone's benefit. Yeah. So, so depth of field. Yes. <laughs> depth of field. Oh, gosh. You're putting me on the spot, and now everything is going blank in my mind. So all right. <laughs> that's okay, <laughs> totally buddy. Totally honest. That's okay. The uh, depth of field. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, you, well, explain it, Tristan. <laughs> depth of field. He's <laughs> just <laughs> holding up his hands for everyone listening at home. <laughs> one is closer no. to you, and one is farther, farther away. away. Yeah. Yeah. Depth and what happens field. when you're looking at something really close, and then there's stuff in the distance. You can actually test this with your own eyes. So yeah. yeah. Depth hold of your field. So hold on. Everybody, right now, unless you're driving, go ahead and hold no, your hand if out. If you're driving, do it with both hands. <laughs> yes. So if, <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the legality of this is. Yeah, just, disclaimer, Triflex is not liable like, for anything whoa. that you might do on your own time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So what about actually really good? <laughs> I'm getting about better like at it. a foot it. out from your face. Yeah, go ahead and fully extend your arm out. Put your hand in front of your face. Yeah. And just, just look with both your eyes at your at your hand. Your your hand is in focus at that moment. So the what's behind it is out of focus. That is the depth of field effect. So then if you look to the left and you look out in the distance that focuses and then your hand is now blurry so mm -hmm. that is a, a great um example of yeah. depth of yeah. field a lot of wedding photography has extreme depth of field you'll see a lot of things behind people when it looks like really heavenly and like beautiful like you barely can see what's going on just like a a smeary water painting behind them which is referred to as bokeh yes so and i've heard it i've heard it said different ways but so depth of field like just using that as an expression is like there's a lot of like color or something like that like it doesn't mm -hmm. really explain it on its own so it's like shallow depth of field means like well the, true yes the, the amount of things in focus yeah like maybe just an inch of depth in front of you so like your hands like maybe a, a half inch to an inch thick right. so it'd be like that's a very shallow depth of field if only that part's in focus and everything else around it's out and a really wide depth of field uh, would be like you can see the wall, your hand in a mountain in the background and everything's mostly like mm -hmm. crystal clear, sharp. And that's all measured with like aperture on a camera. So the, the, what a lot of people are probably familiar with is those, uh, disposable cameras. Yep. They have like an well, infinite focal distance. <laughs> Theoretically. I was going to say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect everyone to. <laughs> it's a very. Daniel, have you ever used a disposable camera with yeah. film in it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I was just they're curious. Actually, they're actually becoking more trendy, so it's actually good that you well, talk about it. <laughs> it's, it's not because he was around when they I know, first right? around. <laughs> yeah. around. Did you ever no. use them as a kid? As a kid, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, when yeah. I went camping, it's a fun thing for the kids to have because they can just run around and do whatever. So, yeah, so at least were, I'm familiar with them. As so a did kid. you ever have to go to like the department store or whatever and go My pick up your photos? Did that, so. so you never went with them? Sometimes I, I'm sure, but I was yeah. in the candy aisle. Or ah, so. nice. <laughs> I yeah. just dug it because we were always at the front of, of the, you know, because it was. Remember, mm -hmm. they would. Mm -hmm. I remember this very vividly that you'd walk in like a mire, mm -hmm. and and your photos would already be like in a package up on the shelf, and yep. there was like A through Z, and you'd go up and you'd mm -hmm. grab them, and then you'd mm -hmm. go pay for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one your more one hour photo. One more yeah. thing on um the. Uh, dynamic reach we're before we back go to back that. to that uh, <laughs> yeah. one more thing on uh, depth of field so like if you have a cell phone and it's specifically iphone or one of the phones with lidar um there's like a portrait mode and yeah, yeah. that's the yeah. better version and it sending out lasers right mm -hmm. david yes and they're bouncing back at your camera so it knows how far away things are from the phone yeah it's and then whenever you take depth, your photo depth map it can yeah it's mm -hmm. sending out lasers so it knows how far away it is yeah. and get a depth map 
Um, and then it uses that information to know where your subject is and everything far away. Mm -hmm. And it can do post-processing to make whatever's near to the camera artificially um, yeah. in, in focus and move everything else artificially out of focus. Uh, and that's like one of the post-production or post-processing ways that cell phones have gotten around it. And the other way is just AI. Like the, the phone yeah. just tries to figure out what a person's face and hair and like body is. But yep. the LiDAR is a little more advanced, but no. so that's a, a way where cell phones are adapting because maybe the hardware, like the lens can't actually compete with traditional like lenses and cinematography, but yeah. it still looks really good for most uses. Yeah. yeah. In, in that case, what I'm like, most likely what it's doing is taking a picture where basically everything's in focus mm -hmm. and then it uses that information. Like if it's really far away, it'll make it more blurry after the fact yeah. so it looks like it was taken with a, a higher depth of field but it wasn't and that's why you can edit it afterwards yeah because yeah. yeah, you can't do that with a normal photo because there's just no information yeah that was one of the big more recent developments with the addition of lidar is that it's creating mm -hmm. that depth map it understands and then it tries to recreate the different uh yeah. ranges of depth based on an aperture I'm yeah. using air quotes because it shows it, but yeah. it's essentially, you know, they're just saying, oh, this looks close to that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the issue is always hair. Oh, yeah. When little, it tries little tiny strands, when it tries to essentially add that blur around the head and there are a lot of stray hairs, it, it really struggles with hair mm -hmm. and it's because it's it's a mixture of AI. It's not a natural just effect from the sensor and the lenses. Mm hmm. AI doesn't, it's not quite there yet, but it's getting there. Yeah. yeah. And that brings me to, to, to part of this as well. The, uh, a lot of people are going to reference the new iPhone and the, the, the current version is the iPhone 14. The pro has the best camera and it is a 48 megapixel sensor. Mm. And wow. It, and everybody that goes a big number 48 megapixels, which there's benefits to this. Of course, yeah. um, you're not, always shooting at 48 megapixels mm. uh, right so if tristan well, over here were to switch come to the dark side yeah he would open up his phone and he'd be taking pictures and i guarantee you he'd be walking around going look at me everybody i'm taking 48 megapixel photos but i have no app to send them through <laughs> well, i don't know about that <laughs> I know. but they're using a process called pixel binning yes yeah. so well, it's pixel binning though what is that? That's a weird wow. thing to say. Yeah. So they're, Daniel, do you know what pixel binning is? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so they're taking the 48 megapixel sensor and they're taking those pixels and they're, they're, they're binning them. They're mashing them into a larger pixel. Uh, it eventually turns into 12 megapixel, but they're using all of these, all this other data to then shove into these other pixels and effectively mm -hmm. creating a 12 megapixel image, but with more data. Yeah. Supposedly, this is better. Sounds yeah. like downsampling. <laughs> it uh, kind of sounds like it. It's on the and physical it, level, right? And it is to a certain degree because you are, I think you can switch it. You have to go turn this on in your settings. For those of you that just bought one of these, you can go in and turn 48 megapixel shooting on in your settings. And then it allows you to shoot these photos. Isn't this another innovation Samsung did like four years ago and iPhone's taking credit for? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Pixel binning has been happening on Android phones for a long time. Um, yeah, especially having a 48 mm -hmm. megapixel or a 50 megapixel sensor. I think the, pretty sure the new pixels have it and the Samsung's been doing it for a long time. It's, it's been around for a while. Yeah. Yep. Before we get too deep in the weeds though, like mm -hmm. all of these things are, are marketable. I mean, they're, they're technological advances. Don't get me wrong, but it's all marketing buzzword. They're, they're buzzwords. buzzwords. Cause most people are going to go, it's a 48 megapixel camera more megapixel equal more better yeah. i'm gonna go buy it mm -hmm. yeah and don't get me wrong that gives you a larger sensor gives you more of the depth effect naturally mm -hmm. yep. so you get some of those those features that are built in that that look better and you're getting more data it usually gives you better lighting too it gives you better mm -hmm. lighting as well that's that's part of what they say right dynamic yeah. range <laughs> yeah oh, that word again <laughs> thank you so tristan's brought us right back around so yeah. i did a lot of research on this and there is no official number for mm -hmm. how many stops of dynamic range. Because there's no standard. Yeah. I mean, there kind of is. There's like a bunch of independent companies that do dynamic range tests. Well, to a certain yeah. degree, yes. Well, I would say the standard is your eye. 
Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, like... But I think he's in terms of measuring. Like an actual, like a data table. Like if you are five foot three inches we use a tape measure and that's how tall you are we don't just be like you're about the height of a banana tree yeah <laughs> so you know like measuring <laughs> with like height and length is like a really good example for this so with dynamic range uh you can think of it as like a ruler and like maybe when you were a kid you had a ruler that only showed like every inch and then when you got older like maybe you started taking more classes where you had to go down to like a half inch or a quarter inch um, dynamic range is kind of like that, where you have more information the more dynamic range that you have. So having higher dynamic range is like having a more precise ruler, and there's more ticks on that ruler, so you can have more points of data. So like measuring by centimeters instead of inches. Right. Yep. 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 But there's there's no real official like reading or... You can't even agree how to measure things. Nah. Like, well, like yeah. T stops or F stops. Yeah, right. So there's, uh, even, there's different T-stops. measurements in there. Yeah. It depends on if you're like cinema or film and okay. uh, the photo yeah. mode and stuff. Interesting. But I think the, the main issue is that you can't officially like read your dynamic range mm-hmm. on on a phone because there's so much AI processing happening yeah. you know, that a lot of that stuff is, is really artificially driven. Yeah. It, With a camera, it's... Mm-hmm. It's either this or that. There is no in between. There's no processing. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a little bit if well, you're shooting in JPEG. But there's like if you go outside on like a bright sunny day and it's been dark inside, and then you look outside, everything's like all blown out and like real fuzzy and really mm-hmm. bright white. But then everything inside the building that was really dark is like evenly exposed and stuff. Or if you're underneath of a tree on a sunny day and like underside of the trees you can make out detail but outside it's too blown out like Mm -hmm. that's your eyes dynamic range at its limit yeah Mm -hmm. um but there's times where you'll hold your phone up and it doesn't show everything you can see in real life and like wow like my eyes look way better than the actual phone like some of the stuff's way darker on the Mm -hmm. phone than it is to my eye or it's way brighter um and then there's also the option with like um I think it's called night sight on Android. I'm sure there's yeah. other terms for it where it's like artificial dynamic range mm-hmm. where you'll take a picture and it says hold still for a second. And then by the time the photo's done, it's brighter. Like you see more detail in the shadows and the highlights than your own eye could see. Right. And that's where like yeah. technology is actually getting to the point, even for cell phones, where if you give it enough time, you can get dynamic rage on par or better than your dynamic human eye. Dynamic rage. Yeah. Rage. <laughs> Sorry, so, I thought that was ah! funny. <laughs> so people have been hearing dynamic range actually probably all the time if they've been looking at TVs hmm. in HDR. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's it, what uh, that's referencing. It's another buzzword for marketing. Yes. Oh, my it gosh. Yes. Because it's there's also the no down. standard. Right. Yes. Well, they're trying to, but nobody can agree on which standard to use. Because either. if I agree to your standard, it makes my product look bad. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so the standard has so, to benefit the product. Yeah. It's the same thing as like <laughs> retina display and all that stuff. Yes. It's just, I'm going to make my own company's buzzwords that mm-hmm. work for my product that make you want to buy it. So when you go yeah. to the store, there's like HDR, HDR 10, HDR, I think 20 now mm-hmm. or something like that. There's and the, yeah, there's, all sorts there's of a ones. lot of different standards and it's just ways people <laughs> measure how many uh the the brightness but then there's also like rec yeah. for color that's so, my favorite thing about apple products it's like all my stuff is like uh liquid retina <laughs> xdr display <laughs> wet eyeball display <laughs> yeah you're like yeah okay <laughs> so back to daniel's prompt that we gave him what is dynamic range i yeah. don't think we said it exactly yet. i mean i just found out this year that hdr stands for high dynamic range so <laughs> all right and well, not we're high working. definition we're making toward making progress high definition range yeah so <laughs> high definition resolution is what i thought it was <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh gotcha yeah and so yeah, yeah. Uh, hd it, yeah, force yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's so many acronyms. So dynamic yeah. range. Well, well, that's not too far off from like UHD though. Like, well, like it, the logic makes sense because yes. UHD yeah. is ultra high definition, but right. HDR mm-hmm. is high dynamic range. range. Yeah. I see okay. where the logic came from. Yeah, that's that's smart. Well, yeah, that's they're like, how many acronyms can we throw on the front of a TV? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or the Blu-ray box it's or like whatever. Healthcare, like how confusing can we make it so nobody understands what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth. So it, in order to help make this less confusing, dynamic range is essentially how much data you can capture in an image and pull data from. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, look at a shadow. When you when you look at the shadow and you let your eyes, you know, gather the information, adjust, you can see the definition in the shadow. You can see the lines. Like, let's just say there's like a cabinet there. You can see the lines and the handle and the things when your eyes 
can, can, can finally adjust to it. So you see this in that shadow. Now, if you were to take your camera and point that at it, depending upon your settings, you might just see black. You might be able to see a little bit of definition. It'll depend on what you set it up as. But if your camera has a lot of dynamic range, so a, a higher amount of it, mm -hmm. then you would be able to go in and post and pull those shadows and see the detail beyond where those shadows were in your original image. Yeah. It's all about data. Yeah. So the more stops of dynamic range you have, the more data you can pull from your image later on. But that's also like if the image isn't baked. So like there are color profiles and stuff and we've talked about like raw mm -hmm. yes. photos. Because mm -hmm. like, yes. if you just want to talk about the photo side of things, like raw photos is a, a codec or a mode in the camera, whether that's on your phone, because they do have it for iPhones yep. and or a Nikon camera or Sony or whatever. And there's also log. And these are different techniques or different settings in a camera that will help artificially or actually increase that dynamic range, mm. the limitation of it. Right. So with like log, it's fake because it's just compressing data, like trying to, t trying to shrink it down so you can pull it out later in post and make it more vivid and more vibrant and brighter and darker in certain spots. Yeah. But raw is actually like saving all of the settings for you so yeah. you can go back and change everything and it's not just on the screen fake. it might look like completely black nothing is there but then you can go into those settings you can start bringing up the shadows and all of a sudden oh my gosh there's detail that it looks like there was nothing there before mm -hmm. so is it possible to like shoot in raw for like video uh, yes so there yeah, is it is it is a little different than photo but mm. it is almost it's getting very close these it's, days it's really cool so essentially uh, most of the stuff we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about it w would be a raw image or a raw video file. Mm -hmm. and, and, and raw is exactly what it sounds like. It is essentially an uncompressed, an untouched. It is just straight from the sensor, mm -hmm. as much data as it Minimal, can give you. Like Minimal raw compression. Yeah. And that's where you'll see if you were to shoot in the 48 megapixel mode on your iPhone, you're going to get about a 100 or 200 megabyte file. Huge. For what length of time? Or for a photo? Just or? for a photo. Yeah. I'm talking a single photo. And... And that's that's kind of that's the issue. So you think about that, and then depending upon your your frame rate of your video, mm -hmm. you know, video is just a collection of images that play over yeah. a very quick amount of time. So if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, every second you're shooting 30 photos that are putting together to make a video. So you have to think if one of those yeah. is 200 megabyte times that by 30, you know, you're is, doing that per second. Do you know what the rough? It like resolution is for that like pixel count so like for with 48 your, with your phone most phones are like 1080 to 4k usually that's like the range for a consumer phone that's under two grand so a lot of times like that's the screen not the pictures that it takes right so a lot of times like you can kind of use the rule with megapixel kind of lines up with resolution uh, uh, you know excluding aspect ratios uh yeah. we're talking like an eight megapixel photo is about an 8k image yeah so, so a four megapixel yeah, so 48K. I mean, we're talking, this is this is billboard plus size. I mean, you could blow this thing up and still have your resolution there. Yeah. I mean, 48 is a lot. Yeah. So we've talked about before, like, whether or not phones need that amount of storage. Mm. And it's like, they could, but what are you going to be using that stuff for? Right. And now we're starting to blur those lines between a professional use and just your day-to-day. -day. Yeah. And, and that's where, that's why they're not giving you that capability. I mean, Apple's really good about putting things behind walls, but. Here's a picture of my kid with a crappy drawing they had when they were four. And yeah. it's like, wow, that's the size of a billboard. It's like, do you need that? Do no, you, you don't. But. But that's why they're saying can. they're hoping, you know, I mean, the <laughs> idea is that with the, the increase in pixels, you in mm. doing the binning, you can still get a higher detailed image. They're doing a lot of things with like zoom and crop. And yeah. that's mm. why you would normally take an image of that size. Mm -hmm. yeah. if you want to shoot a 48 megapixel picture. If you think, oh, now I can literally if I want to get a 12 megapixel out of that, I can crop it down. Yeah. So kind of down sampling. But like David yeah. said, it was in the actual it's not in the post processing mm -hmm. it's like in the actual initial photo when you're taking it right exactly yeah, and it's, it's crazy the comparisons because like one time i was i was out at late and i saw the moon it was looked gorgeous the moon looked gorgeous i had my camera with me i have a canon m50 it's not amazing but it works um mm -hmm. so i got out and i was trying to take a picture of the moon i don't have great zoom on my camera but i whipped out my phone and it had so much better like quality picture of the moon and the moon's like 
all up there in the sky and it's glory and but i yeah. got serious good detail out of just using my phone huh. now have you looked at this image on another screen outside of your phone no okay so this is another big part now before uh, optimization yes <laughs> so they know exactly what they're doing and there is one thing i wanted to cover real fast before we before we go too much further we were talking about dynamic range that was one of the whole whole reasons mm -hmm. the human eye um is 21 stops of dynamic range depends on the person but yes ballpark but ballpark and uh what we shoot with i didn't look up the ronin but um it should be like 12 to 14 okay yeah so the nikons that we shoot with they're about 14.4 is mm. what i read depend okay so photo versus video is like a whole thing too but i assumed you meant video capability max capability okay yeah whatever so the if, sensor is if we were able to shoot in you know video wise if we were able to shoot in raw 12 bit whatever i think that you would be able to get the full amount of dynamic range out of it it just depends on the the codec that you can shoot in right most of what we're going to talk about here is photo based um but in in that comparison there's nothing that matches the dynamic range of mm -hmm. the human eye that i'm aware of um but i think they said like iphones if you want to measure it somewhere they're like 10 to 12 stops but mm -hmm. this is this is really where it is, will come now that comes full circle back to like the marketing portion of this this is the crazy part is that there's so much artificial you know machine learning ai stuff going on with these pictures and how they're melding everything together that it looks like what you shot but there's like a lot of things going on behind the scenes like mm -hmm. we're starting to get to the point where it's like is that is it really a picture like what is a picture yeah and you know or a photo i guess is a better word and is, is are we you know essentially we just have like a fancy dolly that is yeah. interpret you know an ai yeah. that's like interpreting our world in the way that it thinks that it should be shown because at least with the film in comparison you know the more analog what's going on you take a pic you hold up a camera then light hits which is like a film of like chemicals and it reacts and like boom and what it saw is like what physically got ingrained into it but then you take it through like baths of chemicals and like depending on how you do those chemicals the picture is going to turn out different yeah and there's like different chemicals you can put on it and like the different lengths of time you let them soak like that also completely changes what the picture looks like and who says that's what's really what it saw anymore yeah which i think that it's still it's still got to be closer to reality i mean we're mm. talking about we're talking about not adding or subtracting pixels or yeah you know what i mean it's, it's kind of like a magic box that it goes through and it just somehow that's makes ex an image. see that's yeah. exactly it right that's box. that's what's happening um, mystery box no one knows what's going on because they're talking so like the zoom features now they're like oh well it has an optical two time zoom so that means that your camera can zoom in two times whatever its main focal length is mm. and optical is going to still be a true quality full quality zoom picture yep. a digital zoom it starts to do it digitally and it crops and then you get it starts to get grainy like digital yeah. zoom is the equivalent of it's like poopy. having a photo on your phone and taking your fingers and pinching to zoom in that's, yeah that's yep. all it's doing yes and yes. you're like, well, look how far I can zoom in. And if you're shooting at 48 megapixels, you can zoom in more and more and more. If you're shooting mm -hmm. at a lower megapixel count, and it starts you looking zoom in like less. something in Minecraft. Yeah, and it starts getting all blocky. Yeah. yeah. And so that's why they're also upping the megapixel count now. Yeah. Because they'll take this, the, the phone literally does this in seconds, which is, you know, a marvel, I think. But it's still, mm -hmm. it's starting to get questionable. Um, it literally can take a picture. You, you've zoomed in at this point in time. It's taking a picture from multiple lenses and sensors at the same time. It's then melding those pictures in front of each other and trying to see what fits where and how to align those two images and how to sharpen and, mm -hmm. you know, make a crispy image that's been zoomed mm -hmm. in past the actual focal length of this camera. And then it's giving you an image that's like, hey, this is zoomed five times. Yeah. Yeah. And there's all of this post-processing is happening. And now I think Apple now calls it the photonic engine. Yeah. It's an engine <laughs> it come goes up through an engine. Like that. that and deep fusion are the two mm. things. Fusion. You made me uh, made me sad there for a second. I thought I would bought the Ronin for no reason. For video mode, it's uh, 11 to 12 for, yeah. for the Nikon. For video mode specifically. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So, and then the Ronin, the Ronin actually was 14. So there you go, buddy. The cinema camera We've talked about this. is yeah. a little better at its dynamic so, range 
Daniel, are yes. you familiar with the megapixel war that happened I years ago? Bits and pieces. So pretty sure Cole knows about this, right? I'm sure Cole. Knows I've paid a lot of attention to this. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> more megapixels. Yeah. There's a while where people thought. And manufacturers like higher number means better, which not really the case. No, but like think about anything across tech in general. Yeah. You know what I mean? Bigger battery, oh, big number. Mm-hmm. Oh, the the new, you know, the two is better than the one. The, the 8K <laughs> is better than the 4K mm-hmm. and yeah. you're going to want the 12K <laughs> next. And it's like, it's yeah. like all the people that went out and bought 8K TVs, including my father. And there's no 8K <laughs> there's content. No, nope. Not a single one. Still to this day. But also, just down that whole rabbit hole, it's like quality and quantity have never been synonymous like Correct. in the history of the world. Like, it can be, but not always. Yeah. And usually, whenever it's associated with something you're paying money for, you get what you pay for. Yeah. So, yeah. And, uh, and megapixels isn't really that different. Is, is there yeah. a quality of megapixel? So, the issue is, Somewhat, yes. you can think of a pixel like a bucket and its job is to catch light Photon. and you know if you have a bigger mm-hmm. bucket you're going to catch more light and but if you also have more buckets you will catch more light so if you just cram as many buckets as you can but in the same size area so like a 12 megapixel bucket versus 48 megapixel me, megapixel pickle <laughs> megapixel <laughs> try to say <laughs> megapixel <laughs> eight times faster <laughs> megapixel yeah. bucket and if you uh <laughs> megapixel megapixel meg- <laughs> so you can't so do you this, you just more go. buckets but in the same area they're going to be smaller buckets and they're individually going to collect smaller amounts of light mm-hmm. and so that's going to be a, a less precise image it's going to look noisy so it's going to look like a whole bunch of differences in color yeah. and so Early on in the megapixel war, a lot of those sensors didn't look very good, Mm-mm. even though they had the higher number. And so this is what Apple has learned from. So a lot of the, the photos you're going to get out of these new iPhones won't be the full 48 megapixels because you're going to be doing the binning. And that's just going to be taking four of the buckets or eight or whatever they chose and treat them as a single one. So you have more data, but less actual pixels. So it's like cutting it in half instead of being like 24 by 10, it'll be 12 by five. And it'll be like simulating a lower megapixel count, yeah. but a bigger sensor. Yeah, it's like a big old quilt. Yeah. And then each like quilt's made up of the squares. So like if every single square was like just a, uh, like a gradient of color, it's going mm. to like take f- groups of four and whatever like three out of the four says, it's gonna make all four of those the same similar yeah. color. So that way, instead of your grade, like your your quilt just having a bunch of like little what we call noise in this case, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, here's four and squares, three are orange and one's just blue. It's going to be like that blue one shouldn't be there. Yeah. So now all four are orange. And then it'll do that for the whole image or for the whole quilt until like it actually starts to look more accurate to the image. There's less right. noise. It's more detailed. And yeah. there's less like noise is basically artificial data or, or lost data. Like right. there's there's nothing to replace it with. So it's helping artificially replace those elements until it, yeah. it looks more accurate. And so smartly, Apple has taken a long time to move to a bigger sensor. And now per usual. they're... Uh, <laughs> they like yeah, to be last they wait so really they can say time. they did it first. Yeah. <laughs> they wait till everybody <laughs> forgot <laughs> it's been done before. <laughs> and then they say, hey, remember this thing? It's awesome. We did it. Dude, what if they came out with a... Uh, like the little uh, disposable cameras and they're like hey dude, guys you guys never see anything like this we made the apple disposable camera <laughs> this is amazing you know everybody has all these digital things yeah. you can have it forever what if what if life was fleeting what if you yeah. enjoyed the moment what if you had a d- disposable camera three hundred dollars <laughs> don't give them ideas 299 yeah don't give them ideas but it's, this is the thing it's like it look cool you know it everybody wants to just stop at the number of megapixel which again mm-hmm. it's because it's been hyped yes. but there's so many other factors um do yourself a favor look up sensor sizes you yes. know a even though you're packing in all these megapixels into the sensor on the phone there's still i mean on the nikon z7 it's mm. a 48 megapixel camera big boy yeah but the sensor itself is about three almost four times larger than the sensor in yep. your cell phone. Bigger area, more light. 
exactly better picture more data all the more things data. so it's like you can you're gonna uh, people are gonna say they're like oh my phone's got the same megapixel count as this it's just as good yeah <laughs> but in this uh in this world of cameras size mm. does matter so why is it in daniel's case where he could take his phone and say and it's the exact same situation for you you have a much better phone than him and you have a better camera than him if both of them are better and you both point at the moon, how come the phone still looks better whenever you plug it in your computer or airdrop ah. it to your computer? Like, why does your phone still look better than the Nikon's <laughs> with its same megapixels and its bigger bins? Yeah, so what the manufacturers do is they, they make sure that all of these things are working together because they, they control the whole thing, most of it, mm-hmm. between the screen and the camera and all the stuff. They're like, hey, we're going to pack in all this detail and we're going to over sharpen the crap out of this image and Mm. we're going to do all these things and screens are one of those things that i'm trying to think of how to say this but screens are one of those things that kind of work the same way as a sensor it's like to a certain degree you know when you you can still pack as many pixels into a small screen as you can a large screen as between cell phones and tvs but pixel density is the thing that comes into play Yep. And when you take a screen right and you now. still have a 4K resolution, but you squeeze it into six inches mm-hmm. uh, diagonal, you know, that density is going to help make things look better and crisper. Yep. So the density plus all the software and everything looking good in between everything, you're going to pull up that moonshot on your phone and you're going to be like, this is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. This looks great. And then as soon as you pull it up on a screen, that's anything bigger than 13 inches and yeah. you're going to go, the, the image is going to start falling apart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, that's exactly why Instagram is a 1080 by 1080 square hmm. that gets shoved onto your phone yeah. and everybody goes, wow, that looks great. Even though those images are compressed and blown to crap. They're and Apple terrible. knows that the everyday Joe is going to be picking up this phone, pointing at something, press the button once and done. Yep. They are doing everything in their uh, control to make sure that you get a great photo every time. Mm -hmm. Whereas you hand someone an Icon Z6, tell them to take a photo, (laughs) they're gonna get a really crappy photo probably like nine times out of 10. So that's why I was actually gonna ask, do you know what your settings were when you shot at the moon at night? Do you know any of your settings on your actual Uh, camera? On my actual camera, I I had lowered things so that I could get it um, just better with the lighting. So Mm -hmm. did you shoot handheld? Okay. That's part of it. Yeah. So so there are Do you are, know how low your shutter was? My shutter gosh. We're throwing him on the spot. That's yeah, me. It's, <laughs> that's okay. This buddy. was like weeks ago. So I think it was like shutter speed was like one fifty. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so I mean the point to me is like like there are times and places that a phone is better and mm-hmm. a lot of that has to do with convenience and also yes. where is it being distributed. Like you said, yes. Instagram and most like Instagram is limited to ten eighty uh, or yeah 1080p for photos and videos yeah. facebook i think is 720 for live streaming mm. and then like which is a whole other bit rate reason for why you wouldn't use that but it's like mm. even with all that an a actual camera can shoot better quality of image but if you don't have your settings right or take the time to do it in post like a lot of that work mm-hmm. your image will never compare with what the phone is because yeah. if you're just like i shot it on my camera and i'm going to upload it it's probably like you're probably better off shooting on your phone yeah. but there are still cases where you know where it time and quality do make a difference and i think mm-hmm. maybe that was something that you wanted to touch on a little bit Correct. Cole. yeah yeah so we I, you know i wanted to get through some of the technical stuff because we are all pretty technical and I thought it would be fun to kind of talk about. That's okay, hey, <laughs> Daniel. It's, I'm learning. I'm being have, honest. It's, yeah, it's part of it, right? Yeah. We didn't just wake up one day and no. know all this stuff. Right. I mean, it, yeah. it kind of had. And I've done more dude. editing than shooting. Yeah. So yeah. it was literally like years of watching YouTube, and I would watch the same videos over and over again, explaining yeah. aperture, mm-hmm. ISO, shutter, and like uh, white balance and all this stuff. And I would watch these videos over and over and over again. I'd get so frustrated <laughs> because it would be, mm-hmm. I would like quiz myself and I'd still get them confused. And yeah. then sometimes I still will say the wrong thing, but I know what I'm thinking. I, and as long as you know what you're thinking and you know, what's right, you're fine as an operator. Until, yes. Until yeah. you have to start working with other people. And you're like, and do then, this. It's like, what? But then the nice thing is if you work with somebody else that knows what they're doing, you can say it. And they're like, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. And when I, I first met you, I didn't know anything about this stuff. Like, that's the reason why I 
I wanted to help you because like I knew all this stuff and you knew all that stuff and we both like kind of needed each other yeah. to understand what's yeah. going on. I thought I knew video too. And then <laughs> when we got together, yeah. I learned I knew nothing about it. Well, dynamic I, range of knowledge. There's yeah. also like, yeah. there you go. Uh, the difference of like what, like you said, dynamic range of knowledge. It's like there's different sectors even within the same field. So like we have, we work alongside with people that will refer to Aperture as Iris, which is technically not wrong. It's just a different industry refers to it yes. that way. Mm -hmm. It's a, that's more of like television studio stuff, but cinematography in Hollywood would usually refer to that as Aperture, which I'm not from a Hollywood set. So I, I assume they do. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> based on what I understand. And it's like, there's a, uh, a lot of colloquial terms that come up on production sets based on what region you're in and what type of people you've worked with. So it's like, if you know what you're doing and you're competent, uh, yeah. words become a little more universal and ambiguous at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So to wrap up the technical segment, then we'll, we'll get to mm. your value. Um, the, we, one of the things we talked about was HDR. I think that got brought up. Yep. So, um, this brings everything back around to dynamic range. Tristan's story about kind of standing underneath the tree and seeing the shadows under the tree and then the the sun is kind of blown out behind it because it's trying to expose for all those different lights. When you take a picture with your phone, most of the time now, it's going through and it's artificially jamming a bunch of images together. It takes like... 12 images at once it starts finding all the highlights and shadows from all those images and it shoves everything together to give you an image and you can a lot of times if you take a picture and then go straight to your gallery you can watch this process happen yeah it it'll have like a little loading screen or your image is just like really blurry and then all of a sudden it's like boop, boop. <laughs> it's like wow that looks way better than it did 10 seconds ago and i think we're all i think we're all becoming very numb to the hdr effect mm. it, it's 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 a newer process to a certain degree yeah. but i think we're starting to be able to just kind of like glance over it but before yeah. it was like that is the pixel started it how much was your phone your samsung your uh, foldy boy and like, did it and did it have did it have it as a feature have what hdr yeah yeah and how much was that phone well, it was almost two grand. How long ago? Uh, a year and a half. And your new iPhone? 1400 Yeah. Uh, the new Pixels, I think, whenever they came out, were like $300, and that was like one of the newer ones. The like, my point is, mm. phones are... <laughs> the quality of it is getting better for all phones but like even the cheapest phones are, have it to the point that everybody's yeah. kind of numb to it like if you're getting Correct. a phone within Correct. the last two years no matter how cheap it is it probably had it in some form yeah the quality of it differs the two grand phone the thousand dollar phone and my hundred and fifty dollar phone it's like <laughs> all of them do it but i guarantee it's at a different quality and that has to do with like the sensor like you're talking about has to do with the glass and the lens yep. it has to do with the post-processing that the company develops so it's like all those things, but everybody's probably experienced it in some way. Mm -hmm. Or even if you're like, you're walking around, somebody's like, hey, can you take a photo of me and my family? And then you're like, and then it just yeah. starts spinning. You're like, do I take another? It's like, what's it doing? <laughs> and it yeah. used to be kind of that uncanny valley type thing. You would see an image and you're like, there's no way that you can get that sky exposed perfectly. I can see the blue. I can mm -hmm. see the clouds. I can see the hills in the distance. Mm -hmm. And then I can see every tree branch underneath this non-lit shadow of a tree. So everything is evenly lit, evenly exposed. Mm -hmm. And that is where high dynamic range comes into play. Mm -hmm. it, it takes it takes a bunch of processing power, all these different methods and uses, and it makes an image that essentially is one plane mm -hmm. of light and shadow. And it's yeah. not limited to, to phones either because that's been not. a manual process for a long time. Yes, yeah. the, the AI process or machine learning process of doing this is a new thing, and it's called computational photography. Mm -hmm. um, there is a whole list. Essentially what these companies do, they give the computer a list of things to do. And it says, mm -hmm. you're going to take this image, you're going to find the face, and you want to make sure this face is exposed. And yeah. so <laughs> it goes in and it's like, okay, face needs to be exposed. This is the main subject. It finds that. It knows that that needs to be sharp, in focus, exposed yeah. enough that you can see it so it's not in the dark or the shadow. And then it takes like 10 or 12 images all the different light levels and it takes all those and it squishes them into one file and it says this is what i think it should look like based mm. upon what i've been taught yeah and that's your that's your image now and it's that's a not, robot yeah. yeah and that's a robot so so it, it, this is a real human what was one of the first rules i taught you about exposure do exposure? you remember do you remember oh gosh uh, what do we expose for 
we expose for the um the subject exposed for the subject yeah and after a hundred years of film and photo Mm -hmm. a robot can finally do it (laughs) (laughs) to a certain degree yes (laughs) to a very certain degree there's there's times where we break the rule but yeah yeah. well i I mean there's certain times that the 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 technology itself doesn't understand yeah yeah Yeah. it's it's weird sometimes because like i took a video one time and i actually like i put it in my portfolio for when you guys hired me um but like (laughs) The way my I set up my phone on a stand and it shot myself with like a beautiful like cloudless day, and it exposed me, but it also exposed the background for like rather than like having a blown out sky, it was blue. Like and huh. my sister, when I showed it to my sister, it, it she's like, "Is that a green screen?" Because it looked fake. Mm-hmm. It was a very blurry mm-hmm. image too. It was H- not H- good HDR at all. Video. Yeah, so but that's yeah. so that's exactly what we're talking about. That mm-hmm. is an HDR image. That's that's. Did you- did you have it on a tripod? Did you say? I had a gimbal. Okay. So I mean, that's and and all the yeah. they are doing that with video now as well. So you're seeing that across everything. Now it's not as good. No, but it's, it's much harder to do. Exactly, because <laughs> it's a lot of photos it's a, a lot second. Of photos. <laughs> yeah, because with a photo, you can set it up. You have like five minutes, ten minutes to make sure everything's right, and then you can get the shot. And in a video, it's just like like well, I mean, trying to do it for every yeah. Even with phones, it just says hold still, and it takes like. <laughs> depending on the phone some are faster than others it's like w- yeah. like half to three seconds it just says hold still and it's like no tripod no gimbal it's just like yeah this is probably good enough you got you got parkinson's it'll probably still work it doesn't mind oh my, oh my god but here's the thing video no forgiveness at all you start wiggling even a little bit it's like yeah no i can't do yeah. anything with this footage and then it'll mm-hmm. just send out a little shaky cam which is why they started offering in camera stabilization mm-hmm. and, yep. and digital stabilization and all that yep and now on the iphones they have sensor shifting so the sensor itself is actually shifting inside of your phone to stabilize itself which works until you're on a motorcycle or something vibrating which is now why they have what is it sport mode or something like that yeah. Mode, yeah. <laughs> and what they do there is they crop in a lot yes because then you can really stabilize the image after the fact because you can move inside the image it already took which is what action cameras have been doing for years yep hey uh, i want to expose this to all our clients is Exposed. that is that why you're uh is that why all the iphone footage i get from you for real estate shoots has a little sun lens flare in it Oh, no, the so, dot. So that is specifically just how the glass is <laughs> manufactured, how it's set up within the lens system. It is the lens in the iPhone. It's, but I think, I thought the reason it shifts so much aside from like the actual, you know, orientation of the sun or the light mm. into the lens moving, I thought it actually had to do with the sensor shifting and that had to do, in addition <laughs> to the sun in relation to the camera and all that, it also it added the movement to it. Uh, not that I'm aware of. I mean, okay. it just, it moves like any other right yeah. camera with the sun flare. And I'm usually I'm not going to lie. I'm usually like, Ooh, sun flare. And I try to get it. Yeah. Just kind of yeah. put your hand over it a little bit. Yeah. I'm just like, mm. it, it looks pretty. Um, <laughs> except for the dot that we talked yeah. about this, the iPhone an infamous iPhone dot that it gets from light. Yeah. yeah. It's super noticeable on an IMAX screen. Do you remember we went to 48 yes, hours? And someone, I was yeah. like, iPhone, yeah. <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> the, the 48 hour film challenge when we submitted, we went up and watched ours on the big screen and it looked awesome because the Ronin's awesome. And there's nothing <laughs> wrong with getting your start with a, with a simpler camera, but not at all. It's mm-hmm. really cool whenever you can just see someone's co- camera and you're like, Ari or red, you know, <laughs> cell phone footage. <laughs> yep, yep. Yep. It's yeah. like the watermark for shot on yeah. iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> And that's, I think I think we're saying we're saying all of this to say that first off we do we do possess the technical knowledge to understand why these things work the way they do. Mm-hmm. Pretty. And we understand that there are applications for these things. Yeah. Fully. There's sometimes the phones work great. We found that the iPhone video <laughs> it works really well with limitations. With limitations and they tick me off cuz I'm the one that usually edits I know. <laughs> parts of them out. And 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 that's being able to set a setting and forget it, mm-hmm. not forget it, but set a setting and tell the camera what to do is one of the largest things. Now, there's apps out there that that can help you with that, but mm-hmm. you also then have to have that knowledge. 
yeah of what what does the combination of shutter iso aperture what do all these things do well then you have to have the knowledge of the app too you have to learn a whole piece of software correct you know the settings but there's a reason you haven't started shooting with the filmic pro on the iphone i gotta learn the software first yeah and, yeah. and we're you know we show up to a job and it's time to get it done so why why do you yeah. need to learn it for the iphone if it's so expensive and fancy what's what's filmic learn. pro do that your phone can't do natively what's the main reason yeah so there is an app called filmic pro it's f-i-l-m-i-c pro uh you have to buy this app and i think it's 30 or 40 bucks it's not cheap um it's fancy when it comes to apps but it is it gives you full control over your camera and that mm. is changing the codec um, changing your resolution and your frame rate and your, uh, you can't change aperture and that's not variable, but you can lock, but you can, you can change your, uh, your yeah. ISO and your shutter and your temperature. I mean, you can, your white balance, you can change all of these things manually, which is why we shoot with what we shoot yeah. with. These are all settings you're familiar with when you bring up your Nikon or the Ronin. <laughs> yeah. These are and things we tweak every day when we shoot a subject. And they're the things that the iPhone hides for the everyday user because yes. you don't need to worry about them and that's why we like having our actual cameras versus shooting everything on iphone because it's frustrating. When we take it take a picture on our cameras <laughs> we can then put it through our own process and tweak it to exactly what we need it to do imagine showing up on set with your camera and leaving it on auto for the whole thing every shoot oh that would be horrible. So, we would never do that. It would be so hard to edit later. Every yeah. single image so, is different. Yeah. The client's like, what that button? You're like, I don't know. I've never touched it before. <laughs> it's yeah. like the shutter. He's <laughs> yeah. like, I knew everything through the phone and I just leave it on I auto. I don't even know. <laughs> but it's funny because on the other side of the coin, like I pick up a phone and I I know what I want. I know how to get there, but it won't allow me to do so. Ah, it's blocking you. It's kind of like... Yeah using like a mold like shape to make clay versus like actually mm -hmm. hand doing it yourself yeah 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 exactly i kind of think of like that's a good example why well, learn how to make hamburgers when we can go down to mcdonald's and buy one yeah <laughs> that's true though and once you know how to make one you don't really want a mcdonald's hamburger yeah. no no <laughs> you want to have that control you want to have However, like you know the precise sear on the patty and, it's you know 2 a.m nothing else is open <laughs> yeah. i want something quick yes. convenient yeah. that is fast and I don't have to think about it. And it's like, that's yeah. McDonald's. And it's going to be <laughs> and that's pretty good every that's time. time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But if you, there's like, there's certain people that are like, I refuse to eat out because it's like, I want to make all the food myself because I know it's healthier and it's better for me. It's like, yeah, but yeah. that's really time intensive. That's awesome that you have the opportunity to do that. Not everyone gets to do that. And yeah. McDonald's hasn't put that out of business. It's yeah. just become more specialized and that's why we exist. Exactly. We exist to fill that gap of that special, you know, very particular twist yeah. on things and, yeah you know it can't just take a photo with the iphone We're, that's our goal triflex is what we want to be the capital grill of videos the gordon <laughs> ramsay of videos there you go <laughs> you, everyone oh else my God. You, where you, would you guys say we are if Gordon Ramsay is the goal, where would you guys say we're at right um, now? Um, uh, I don't know, man. Capital Girl's pretty bougied, man. <laughs> I know it's no Hell's Kitchen, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm a. I think we're a, a, a Mama Corollas right now level. I feel like that's where we are. We're, I could see that. We're good. I don't think that's bad. Yeah, dude, Mama yeah. Corollas is the sweet spot. If you're up in Indy, you want some good food. Mama Corollas. That's a free shout out. We'll come shoot a commercial we're in exchange really, for yeah. some pasta. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm there with that. Did you, have you been up there yet? Yeah. That I've been up place. there many a time. Have you had the have you parents had like Good it. Morning Mamas next door there for breakfast, brunches? It's I've been, been there the once, yes. Yeah. Highly recommend. It's too far north for me. Uh, uh, but anyways, so... That's where we are. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, but yeah, so there's... I know that was a lot of technical stuff, so hope, hopefully we didn't lose you. But it is all to say that uh, there's applications for both, mm -hmm. and we're hoping to be able to use our knowledge base to be able to help you use your device at its fullest potential and that's that's recommending things like filmic pro if you're really trying to take your video to the next level you do have a very powerful device in your hands that you pay a lot of money for that you can put to work for you in different ways mm -hmm. and and it just takes a little bit of knowledge to be able to push that further and now being where we are at like i can barely take a picture with my phone and like it really mm. it's i don't buy a phone uh, for the camera i honestly like if it didn't come with the lens i wouldn't be super mad really yeah dude i have I never struggle. shot more video outside of work than when i bought my phone because they offer it's it's got two lenses on it and i've never Read had a photo. phone mm -hmm. okay 
Well, talking photo specific. I don't shoot photos I'm in not general. A video guy. I don't like. I don't. I think photos are silly because it's uh, like. I don't know. No. I think oh, photos are hot silly. Take. That's yeah. my hot take. I love it. Yeah, photos what? are silly. It only helps. Pay I mean, for other people's lives. It's fair. Like there's there's a use for them. I just don't use them. I don't post things to social media, so it's like, what do I use photos for that a video wouldn't do, right? Shopping list. So it's like, you... Oh, oh, oh. I actually use Monday now, thanks to you. I, I, use, <laughs> I, I use a business-oriented uh, project management software for my groceries. I love it. But um, it's hilarious. I just, I don't know. I, I get a photo, and it's like, oh, this is cool. What, what am I ever going to do with it? Yeah. Well, and, and because I don't use social media really anywhere at all, I'm not going to post it anywhere. The only thing that I do is like working on house projects or I'll go out with date night with my wife or like we've been going to the um, hospital and stuff for her uh, checkups and stuff. I'll just grab my phone out, throw it on wide angle and I mm. shoot everything on wide angle now because it's like it just looks fine. I can crop in later if I don't yeah. like it. <laughs> it looks good enough. And it's like I'll just start capturing 10 second moments that I would have otherwise just never got because my old phone while it looked fine the zoomed in lens just always ticked me off because it never actually showed me enough yeah and now it's like i just want it for the memory i don't want it for anything else i just want something quick and fast i'm not bringing my ronin you know i get it to to date night I, yeah, well, or here's and yeah. i'm not like convenience that's, sake that convenience yeah. and it's like to me while i wouldn't shoot a professional video with anything other than the ronin now because it's so convenient yeah <laughs> it's so much more convenient uh, I don't know, i'm on cole's side i uh I was pouring myself a Guinness about two weeks ago and I had a frosty glass I took out of the freezer mm. and I was like, oh, that looks really cool because it's all frosty and it had the, the head and everything. So I took a picture of it with my iPhone and then I spent like <laughs> 20 minutes messing with the settings to no, make it look right. No. I was like, that doesn't look how it did. Like, there we go. And like raising up the shadows and crushing everything. Yeah. And, and that, it's ruined me. You guys have ruined me taking photos. You and know, it really does depend on like what you're wanting to capture. Like if you're wanting to capture yeah. memories with your wife, like 10 seconds, that's, that's a beautiful thing about it. But if you're wanting to capture like something like artistic in that mm -hmm. sense, like what David was talking about, it's like I did a similar thing. I was I had like a gold peak T and mm -hmm. the light was going through it. It just perfectly. So I like angled my phone just to capture one quick image of it. Now you could like argue that you want to like shoot a whole gold peak commercial like that. And like, yeah. <laughs> that could be cool too. But I think it's yeah. also a preferred medium type thing. Yeah, exactly. It's I like, prefer video over photo in general like yeah. that's no. do you know why i prefer photo over video do you want do you want to know i, I do actually do know. want to know why do you prefer it because the quality is unmatched mm. the crispness what do you of an image what do you consume it on like on your phone all the above okay all the above and that's the thing that's the thing is i can take a 24 megapixel photo and even if i downsample to 12 or 8 it's still a beautiful crisp just frame of time that's yeah, my yeah. that's my issue like if if video could match that quality i would probably use it more but it just doesn't match i can't get it to match that with our current and hardware like, that's the thing as well it's like you can now whatever image you capture you can frame that like you said and hang it up in your house and see it like every day and appreciate it for what it is yeah whereas like i mean I guess Tristan could have like 10 second gifts hanging up around his house. <laughs> Dude, that's what, that would actually that's, be really cool. That's, literally, literally that's, that's where the future's going great. That's like, what the YouTube channel was started on was like my memories, doggy poop, and I'm well aware of it. And my grandpa, God love him, he's his memory's not so great either. And I'm probably on my way in that direction. So probably. it's like, yeah. I, I'm well aware of it. And I wanted to start vlogging and making videos with my friends because those were yeah. things that mattered to me. You and see, there's your. There's I'll go back and watch them. I don't remember making any of this stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I don't have any memory outside of the thing that I created. I'm like, wow, I got to do that. See, there's yeah. your problem. Yeah. You haven't tested it. You know what I mean? You haven't put your, you haven't stretched your brain muscles, your memory <laughs> muscles. Like, I can look at a photo and know what was happening in that moment. You know what I mean? Like beyond. Oh, I can I tell don't you the video, but my the video is in my, in my, my my last photo I took is well, a, not the last is a is a parking ticket, and I can tell you what it was because <laughs> because I got a photo of that, and then I have a photo of where my car was parked <laughs> because I didn't think I should have got that ticket, and yeah. you sent me a message about it. So. Yeah, and so <laughs> I guess I, photos for me is I usually just use them to send off to other people Which because I, mm -hmm. I can't the bandwidth won't let me send videos for you, and and this is the thing, right? This is this is where we're flip flopped. Photos for you is utilitarian. Yeah. Yeah. it's mm. a it's a quick memory device it's fast and, and you use it in that way mm -hmm. 
and that's what I use video for. Oh, yeah. really? Video for me is more of a utilitarian device. If I need to capture something more than just a single frame, then I will use video. But it's like when my kid is doing something really cool, it's funny, I'll be more apt to grab my camera and want to just like burst some photos out mm -hmm. and get that memory. And it's it's really interesting, like just what I'm thinking about as are you trying to capture a story or are you trying to tell a story? And like mm. with photo, you get the opportunity, Cole, to later tell stories about those images you've captured. You get to tell stories about your daughter and like what she was doing in those moments to the people you share those story, share those photos with. And Tristan, you get to tell the stories by making those videos. Yeah, like that's what you get to do. And it's like Cole's gonna put as much care and craft into like those photos of his daughter, but you're gonna mm. put as much care and craft into the videos you're capturing of your wife. And hopefully, like one day, like you could like, put them into a montage and yeah. like, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I've been I, shooting the whole house videos. Yeah, and they're yeah. Really I know a lot fun. of Instagram photos. They usually have like a description afterwards to talk about. Like, hey, we went on a trip. Like we went on your fall trip or whatever. You took all your yeah. pictures. You usually have a little thing that like describes what the heck was going on, why you were taking pictures of it, like what you know it adds to the context of it. Whereas a video, you really don't need to do that because most of the time that will be within it. And like that's another thing that's like about quality is like I took a bunch of videos when i went to colorado and they're not mm. amazing like quality but it is it does tell the story i'm trying to tell of mm -hmm. like my experience mm. in colorado it reminds me and it takes me back to there whereas a lot of the photos i took are much better quality and they really mm. do capture the moments for what those moments were to me i and like you, the hybrid between photo and video GIF. where it's like macro slow-mo stuff of like epoxy where it has like all these glitter and like different colors and it's all like moving around yeah. and blending that could be maybe a hybrid that you two could do see i think honestly like i watched this video that this director or editor i think he was a mixture of the two he shoots all of his stuff on red and he mm. edit he shoots everything in raw mm. so he's Ooh. shooting raw uncompressed um it's a 12k video so, I mean, we're talking crazy big files. Like, this is not an everyday attainable thing. You know, we're talking a $50,000, $100,000 camera with computers to match and mm -hmm. reference monitors. I mean, he's doing all of this stuff. He's going to have to have a lot of storage as well. I mean, this is some crazy stuff. But his dynamic range is, is on par with my photo stuff. And if mm -hmm. I could have that sort of control, mm -hmm. I would probably want to do more of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's all a, you know... That's, there's a lot of steps and a lot of things that have to be checked off a box for me to be able to do that. So you yeah. want to you want to get the extra SSD for the run and start shooting raw? I definitely do. I would love to be able to do that. Like I could definitely. Would you actually start grading the footage if we did that? I would love to. I would because I I would pay the grand if dude, you would start grading. Dude, you have no idea. Like I sat there when I did my daughter's photos the other day. I just it was a nice day, and sometimes you got to flex your you know your muscle. Got to flex it. Well, you just got. I mean. <laughs> yes it sounds funny but yes but it's like you have to even though we do it for work you mm -hmm. still sometimes have to do it creatively just to stay in the mindset mm -hmm. and so being mm -hmm. able to go out and play with light and play with your shutter and your aperture on different yeah. lenses and just kind of like understand how it works in a very low stakes environment mm -hmm. i think helps helps to benefit as you go further yeah i was just gonna say speaking of play with aperture and play with light Maybe we should talk about some other plays. <laughs> yeah. Ah, look at you. <laughs> I love it. Like yeah, play on words. You. Have it a little, yeah, have it a little like play it. action. He was pointing at me for those of you who are not watching. And I was just like, what I'm, did I do? And what well, did I say? I'm, uh, you may be looking at it from, uh, f uh, as a listener and looking down at the time, but, uh, I think you're well aware it's time to talk about a sponsor. Yes, it is. Oh my gosh. Okay. David. What on earth Actually, could be you, our sponsor? Daniel, do you have this pulled up? I do have it pulled up. Would you like to read it? Oh, uh, we're reading on this side of the room today. We'll yeah. 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 Well, I think it's time. We're going to test out your reading skills because Tristan <laughs> failed skills. last week. Hey, dude, oh, you, okay. you biffed already today on yours. <laughs> you had one little chop. So we're talking about <laughs> plays, and if you ever want to see really cool plays, you can look up Passion for Acting Theater Company. What's well, up? Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Which we still need to have our representative on, which we're talking about doing. And we'll be able to expand upon that. She can yeah. come on mm. when she finishes editing her photos. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> so Passion for Acting Theater Company has a passion for bringing excellent and entertaining live theater to, the, to audiences in Bartholomew County. 
Passion for Acting Theater Company, created in 2018, performs dinner theater productions for the terrific and electric Willow Thieves of Hope on the Square in Hope, Indiana. That's a lot of hope. Um, I know. <laughs> hope, 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 hope. Very hopeful. I hope we can get through this ad. In their first production, <laughs> The Miracle Worker, was a huge success and received great reviews from the audience members. Since then, Passion for Acting Theater Company has performed 10 shows ranging from com- comedies like The Kitchen Witches and The Odd Couple to drama and suspense like their original murder mystery, Angel Street, to classic children's literature like The Secret Garden and Anne of Green Gables. The next show will be Kalamazoo, a comedy about what happens to older folks who try to get into the online dating scene. Kalamazoo was, will be performed at Willow Leaves of Hope in February, just in time for a Valentine's date. Ooh, look at that. Or to laugh with the winter blues away. Enjoy a delicious dinner and a great night of entertainment at Willow Leaves of Hope. Ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. <laughs> Their phone is 812-341-7251. Now, call now to make reservations for this Laugh Out Loud comedy. Have you I, don't, don't, don't. I, was not, I was not ready to read a phone number. So you was like, right. nope, somebody I'm else. like, somebody else take it. it. I was not. I love it. I was like, that's going to be way too hard. Have you ever hard. seen uh, uh, Glenn Ross, the movie or whatever it is, um, with Alec Baldwin? Uh, yeah. 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 It, ABC, buddy. Yeah. Always be closing. Yeah. Coffee's co- for closers. Co- podcast is for closers. <laughs> there you, you go. You want to come on the podcast, you got to you gotta rack out them projects. And David's been, or Dan, <laughs> Daniel and Dave have both been racking them out this week. Okay. Boom, boom, we've boom. got We've got a fun segment coming up. Before that, let me just wrap up our conversation here. Uh, mm. If you stuck around for that whole thing, thank you. I hope you learned something. This is this is something we're super passionate about. Uh, that's why we're doing what we're doing. And so mm-hmm. uh, our main point of telling everyone this, uh, we hope to be able to help on the educational side. If you guys have any questions or anything, we'd be happy to help um to put those phones to good use but otherwise if you want someone to point a big old camera at uh at your subject we can do that <laughs> and use our fancy knowledge and technical abilities knowledge knowledge new Orleans. um <laughs> i don't know <laughs> sorry uh, but yeah hopefully you learned something so now you can learn hopefully. something probably real odd um <laughs> we uh gosh you know what's funny you guys? stuck around this long thanks for coming guys <laughs> oh yeah no, we got a couple things so the, so the fun thing about this and we're skipping over the one thing okay. um the fun thing about this segment is we forgot to name it um <laughs> oh, so, it's a fun segment this is we the have fun here. This is, is this not hot takes the wheel of hot takes there yeah sure let's you call it that call it the wheel of hot takes <laughs> so we we have a uh and all here let's uh let's i don't know how to do this here we go nope nope this That's is the segment, just got this is the segment. He, just, use it. he just says nope for the next three minutes yep nope. <laughs> Can nope, you, can you guess camera. what word he's going to say next, guys? I didn't set it up. That's fine. Um, next record? time. Yeah. Uh, Actually, here, somebody somebody talk about the segment and explain it real fast. All right. I can talk about it if we want. Uh, it says fun segment. Click here to spin. <laughs> <laughs> wow, no, no, no. you turd. Okay. We uh, sat we- down. We came up with a segment today, yeah. I'm pretty sure. So yeah, at least we were trying to think detail. of fun things to do. You. And we're thinking of um, how Tristan and I in the office, sometimes we like to talk about and have a little uh, discussion about things that really don't matter. Yeah. And it, it's just really fun to do that. And sometimes it annoys Cole. And you're like, well, what if we turn that into a segment? So, so we, we made have, a list uh, well, of like Cole. really weird things to argue about. And you have you spin the wheel. And whatever you land on, you have to argue that for like a minute. If, if we're going to give the backstory, we got to give it all the way. My wife is addicted. <laughs> every, <laughs> every other week, every we're other month, now, so. she <laughs> finds something new that she's, she's in love with. And right now, she's going on a Rhett and Link Good Mythical Morning oh, podcast bench. Oh, is this what inspired it? Oh, that's true. And there was, she yes. has, they have this segment, about this. and it's a great yeah. podcast, by the way, just in case you don't Small know, they're one of the, shout out. They're one of the biggest ones. Yeah. <laughs> they were big enough to buy Smosh, so they're they're doing well. Oh, and yeah. they have a segment where they throw uh, darts at a dartboard, and, well, they throw darts at a map, and then they have to guess where the food is, and they have to throw the dart to the country closest, and then they measure it. It's, it's a whole game. And I was like, we should throw some chance. We should throw some element of fate into the podcast mm. uh, i was like well 
we don't really have a way of throwing a dartboard, but what else could we introduce? And then the idea of spinning a wheel came up and it's like, all right, so what do we put on it? And then as David says, we mm-hmm. usually find dumb things to argue about. And I thought it'd be really fun if, uh, no. wait, if wait, we okay. force people to argue can, about can I things. Just use this analogy real quick. I just like <laughs> when, when Tristan tries to go full circle on something, it doesn't, it's never a circle. It usually looks like a Candyland board. It goes all yeah, yeah, over yeah. the place. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then Every we time. finally get back to the right point. <laughs> But at the end of the day, we're here. This is the wheel <laughs> of fate. Of the wheel of yeah. forcing arguments. <laughs> the wheel. Uh, we should. I did like that. We did not talk about this beforehand, but I do like the timing of it. Mm. So, does someone want to put a timer out there? Should we, what should we do? A minute? Uh, David said a minute. I'd like a minute. I think a minute's good. A two minute. just enough. You yeah. can do two minutes probably since this is the first time. We can slowly uh, lower it. Like a minute's already minute. kind of long. A minute's okay. a long minute. time. Let's go a minute. Yeah. Some Let's of these are pretty wacky. Okay, so... I'm going to hit play. For those of you watching on the YouTube channel, you will be able to see the wheel as it spins. So, yep. I'm going to spin this. So that I th- Tristan goes first as, oh. as, the, right. as the person. As so. the creator of the okay. segment. We're spinning. We're spinning. Oh, the screen, re- land the on. screen recorder is really chugging your iPad. I know. <laughs> it's really just because it's web-based <laughs> is the problem. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, we got why David needs a raise. Yes! <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, and so we are we are arguing against David getting a raise, but Tristan's going to try to convince us otherwise. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so count us in, David. All right, three, two, one, go. Okay, David shouldn't get a raise. <laughs> what? No, you're arguing for. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, thought that, I, I just want to double doing down. A bit. On that. I thought he was doing a bit. <laughs> uh, honestly, David's a great guy. He's been working hard for the company longer than anyone else, including the co-founder. Yeah. So I feel like, in a way, he deserves a little bit more stake in the company. If we won't give him a percentage, maybe we should just give him a raise so he won't try to take a percentage. I right. really have to say, I don't really do much. <laughs> like, I, I have no idea what I'm doing half the time. I just kind of make it up, and then I just send you an invoice. <laughs> Yeah, but the way he talked to me earlier, f- yes, or yesterday, <laughs> would, would would argue the fact that he does not deserve a race. But the fact that he's so diligent in putting in his numbers accurately on his own accord shows that he is responsible enough to handle a race. I don't even remember what I do. I just and look at our messages and was like, oh, that probably took me an hour. And the amount of times I hear beeping come from the server these days is like him as yeah. an IT guy. I don't think. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey. here's the thing. I want to finish it. on this, right. David. <laughs> When you first started here, you had a lot to do, and you may not do yeah. a lot now, but I think that's because, as your title states, efficiency manager, you have become so efficient, you've yeah. obsoleted yourself. So, in a way, <laughs> I feel like you deserve raise to compensate for how good you are at your job. All right. I think because I have half of this decision, I just, no. <laughs> We're at an impasse, which means a no. So I tried. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Daniel? All yeah. Right, Daniel's sweet. turn. We're okay, you ready? All of us. I'm, I hope so. <laughs> Spinning, spinning. It's going. Did you remove that one? Nope. But there's 23 different things to pick from. It's still going to that we came up with originally. We are contributing these. Yes. So you are going to argue for why you should keep your passwords on a sticky note on your desk. Oh, it's just it's so convenient. It's right there next to your keyboard. It's what I'm looking at half the time anyway because I can't type fast, and so it's like boom. I ever need a password? No need to copy paste. Who knows how to do that anyway? It's right there. I can just type it in word by word, letter by letter. I can't agree with them more, to be honest. <laughs> However, <laughs> it's right for there. today, um, <laughs> LastPass is like three dollars a month, and I think it's free if you have it on one like phone. I don't or have three dollars a month. <laughs> well, it's free if you only have it on one type of device. So yeah. it will store all your uh, passwords and put them in automatically but then, for you. Like wh- I have to go on my phone. Like it's like I have to yeah. do all this. It's like it's right there. If you have Google Chrome, there's built-in password manager. Again, it's free. Like and it's going to be on, on your phone, and it'll, yeah, it'll, it'll yeah, prompt you when you put in somewhere. passwords. I have to. It'll sync across all your devices but yeah, what if but i like, just I go to, to your go desk somewhere. and rip it off your desk and rip it yeah. into 30 different pieces well, that's, and throw that's it away the thing. that's the thing i have multiple sticky notes and i press down hard enough when i write it the first time so it leaves an impression so you take the first <laughs> one i still have it secretly there so how many I, accounts boom. do you have do you have like 20 different sticky notes i have two i've never <laughs> agreed with you more in my life <laughs> oh my gosh yeah, no. I'm just going to set your whole sticky note thing on fire, and then, oh, now you can't log in. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> or I'm just going to log in his bank. In. 
All right, Daniel, you got to change change your password. (laughs) (laughs) All right, it's my turn. David. All right, here we go. It's a great wheel. I know. I hope I get the raise one again. I hope you don't. You're going to argue for why the new Star Wars movies are better than the old ones. Uh, new Ar- new Star Wars, I mean, has a female protagonist. I mean, there really needs to be better representation. She's very strong lead. She has a great journey going on the way. She finds a lightsaber, and that's awesome. I love lightsabers. I mean, who doesn't? I prefer the older ones. I think the older movies are better because they are much more male-heavy. Yeah, well, that's not very... Well, I guess Both it's you assume, first of all, that she's a male. What? She's a female. Yeah. I assume she was a male. <laughs> which is which is well, why I didn't like them. I wanted it to be more progressive, but they never fully address mm. whether or not she's male or female. That's true. It's They're never also explicit. Old, and like look at the prequels. The CGI is just horrible there. Like why would you even watch them? Oh the no, prequels. now they're four K remastered on Disney Plus. They're yeah. they're so much better and they quality. Keep retconning Are they things really? and like the first uh, the sequels, they, they haven't changed them at all. So did you not like the Death Star the first two times and you preferred it the third or fourth time? <laughs> I mean, this time they had a whole planet. It's bigger. It's better. They have a battle right on it. Lightsaber battle, even. <laughs> Not Fire enough loot. I want you to go <laughs> repent for what you just <laughs> shared in the last minute. That was disgusting. I've never yeah. disagreed with someone more in my life. <laughs> well, like, did you genuinely disagree? <laughs> it's disgusting. Okay, I was spinning the wheel for myself now. No, oh Obi-Wan. It's Should not a movie. Should we, like, have a disclaimer where we say that none of these are our actual opinions? Yeah, They're all our opinions, are our and opinions. we all believe them. all yeah. hyperbole and, like, <laughs> wholeheartedly <laughs> i i could not disagree more with this oh, what, what is it what did you get office nap time <laughs> yes. all right so you're arguing time. for it we yes. have to argue against uh, you okay okay um okay you good you started yeah you, you already oh, okay. lost 10 seconds <laughs> um okay so uh, i am arguing for office nap time because i think it will help with the production level of people's day-to-day <laughs> as an efficiency manager i just they won't cannot be tired. agree with this no i i think he makes a valid point i think I think we have to agree with him. Office nap time is the best. He's playing the game. Well, here's the thing: the, the longer the that. nap, no, hates it. that's that's less time working. Which is better? How? I want to make sure that your nap mm. time and your mental health and like your your stability throughout the day is better. So I think I a just, nap time would just be better. The, why not just start the day ten minutes later then, and then yeah. just skip naps out? I then don't, we don't understand why you're saying you want to pay napping. me well, to no, nap. I would I would rather people nap on I my dime. I don't want to be paid. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why would you do that? Because I'm such a generous person. I'd rather pay people to nap in but the we building. Have, we have bills to pay that that have to get paid. We yeah. we can't pay people you to sleep. You need to listen to your budget, man. He I knows care what's more going about on. my personnel. <laughs> I'm uh, so happy with uh, you. I'm so happy we have the soundboard bites because I get to make the promo reel and I know exactly what to get. Never, fantastic. Never felt more uncomfortable in my life. Oh, so, whatever. That was disgusting. And he watched three births. <laughs> Technically, I've watched zero, but I was there for three. <laughs> <laughs> there you That's go good. that was our first attempt at the <laughs> it went a lot better than the first attempt at bleeping that's true that's, that's true. true but I we'll perfect this, everything I, as time I, goes I on i like this yeah this is good yeah okay who would have thought our because ra- it was originally it was going to be ramblings or something like that it was just going to be yeah. some incoherent <laughs> ramblings yeah. like our normal episode which is kind of what it turned into but uh yeah. i like it we, we're gonna find a way to monetize it what yeah, how yeah. was the one minute was that too long too short i think it was just right. i think a minute yeah. 30 like for yeah, some I, I think we could go just 30 yeah. seconds more because mm-hmm. it takes a good 10 seconds to figure out what you want to say it may be 30 second prep time and then a minute argument time i agree yeah, like second prep. Yeah, because yeah, it prep. gives you gives you time yeah. to like line up some zingers in there. We can figure this out later. Yeah. Let us know in the comments. What I don't do you know. Think? You guys like just us winging out a podcast and trying to figure it out as we go. Because yeah. that was the last two seasons. Go check those <laughs> that's out. That's why we're doing it. <laughs> I think okay. that's we got one more segment today, guys. We're going to talk about what we always talk about at the end of the podcast. We're going to talk about our weekly tip. Woo-hoo. And this week we talked about microphones and better audio. Microphones, which I think. I think our podcast audio is a great example of good audio because mm. how else would you hear all the crunches every time I eat a snack? Mm, yeah, or the of my of my my wetness of my mouth. Um, it is because we are all using uh, Shure MV7s, sure and they are dynamic mics 
they're mm-hmm. used for live performances slash audio or what voice dynamic audio. Mean? Well, there's a very long explanation that's very technical, and they uh, compare it to a, a condenser mic, and oh, it's all goodness. things that I don't fully understand. Ah, perfect. Um, there you go. That's a dynamic mic. Tristan's yeah, further enjoying a bag of Doritos. <laughs> Push the mic away further. Hmm. ASMR. I'll just uh, good. Yeah, there you go. Mute him. Okay, <laughs> so uh, on on this week's tip. Uh, Daniel helped me here. We put together a bunch of mics, all the mics that we have in the office pretty much. Mm-hmm. And we talked about uh, applications for those mics and the different types. So we talked about the dynamic mic, which is what we're using currently. The Ooh. Shures. We talked about shotgun mics, which we have three of. Um, and those are just very directional. Yes. Uh, we use those a lot for interviews. Um, very more stationary. Too. They're very mm-hmm. sensitive. Very sensitive. <laughs> um, different quality. A different quality as mm-hmm. well. Yes. So again this is one of those things it's kind of like we were talking about like cameras and sensors and things <laughs> like sometimes more money does mean more better it's true mm. and you know depending upon the the uh the way that you're putting your art in front of someone um of course because yeah. uh, you know i can use a very fancy camera and shove a image out on instagram mm-hmm. and it's still gonna crush it i mean it's gonna look nice don't get me wrong but mm-hmm. still it's gonna be nowhere yeah. near the quality it is straight out on the computer but same way with microphones yeah uh we we actually swapped our mics from uh season two and part of season three i think we swapped new microphones in Mm -hmm. still sure's still the same type of microphone is still a dynamic microphone but it is of lesser quality but it is specifically for what we do Mm -hmm. so sometimes using you know using a microphone for its correct application can make all the difference it really is and we actually get a lot of compliments on the podcast that we have good audio yeah and uh we all frequent podcasts so every once in a while i like to pull ours up just to listen to the goodness that is our <laughs> podcast crispiness of voices crispiness of that and the chips um yes and the chips so yes. so we talked yeah so we talked about the dynamic mics the shotgun microphones and lav mics or lavalier mics yep. we didn't actually use a lav mic on the or in the video I mean, um so that that is that is technically not so we so we have dji mics and okay. and they are they have a built-in microphone in the yep. um the transmit to transmitters yes um it's not technically a lav mic yeah that's usually mm. a independent microphone that plugs into that system uh, and that's the one that kind of we just didn't do correct yep. it, it clips on the shirt or there's there's different a lot of sometimes like if you're fancy you tape it in between your chest there's there's other places to put it to conceal it it's great for concealing um, especially for wireless microphones, things like that. Mm-hmm. So we, we we touched on it, but we didn't technically yep. use one in the shot. Um, but we uh, we put all these to the test and mm-hmm. kind of t- talked about application for these different things. And you can you can hear the difference yeah, between yeah. everything. Yeah. They and, all sound good, just in different ways. Well, so yes, but the NTG five is still mm-hmm. that's our shotgun microphone of choice for high quality. Yeah. Uh, type things so we have a like a, a shotgun mic from deity that is a smaller compact system that is great for a running gun mm-hmm. if you want to throw it on top of a camera and just have your subject talked without having to mic up or move any equipment you can just kind of throw everything together really quickly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which we also have a road shotgun mic that we don't ever use it's here just in case it's one that i bought a while ago and has no shielding inside of it because of the price mm-hmm. which introduces interference so we don't use mm-hmm. that one so yeah yeah. thanks for tuning in for this segment tips and chips (laughs) yeah that's it i guess please tell us please tell (laughs) us yeah how much you like the chips during the tips does it make it more interesting no no um but yeah so uh, you know we think i'm not stopping there but um i think that there's with audio it's just like anything else Mm. um this is another way this is this is the capability of of kind of pushing beyond what's there you can you can use your phone and there's audio processing and there's all these things going on and Mm -hmm. they're canceling out background noise which is great but the size of your microphone Mm -hmm. the 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 type of microphone the quality of the materials and 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 the way that they build them it really also does depend on the content you're wanting to produce if you want a atmospheric shot where you're getting in the noises that are surrounding your subject and all that jazz like a shotgun mic can still pick up stuff like that you may mm-hmm. need to pick up some folly in other places and stuff like that, but it still picks up 
around the subject. If you want just the subject itself, <laughs> something that clips on them is always best. And everything behind them, as we found out with a water fountain. <laughs> yes. 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 Everything behind them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was, yeah. That's that about you. Nuts about you. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You'll notice in that one, but. Yeah. And, and, we're, and audio is a whole other beast. Mm -hmm. And you guys, you guys yep. will find that out too if you're doing any of that work. It's just, yeah. it's a whole other thing to add on top of thinking about the image um, of what mm -hmm. you're shooting mm -hmm. and, and trying to make the audio good as well. Mm -hmm. I, I wish that we could just... There's a whole art to it. There just is. Just like photos and video. There is. And I have much respect for anybody yep. out, any audio engineers out mm -hmm. there. So and we know that. we've now kind of gotten in contact to a semi sound professional guy now oh he's more than semi yeah he's, he's a yeah. he's a full truck he's full load on? full awesome. truck load yeah well, we need to have, have him on. on sometime we need to do that we need it we need an expert he so. just critiques our whole setup right yeah. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> i don't terrible. know if i want to have a podcast on this setup guys <laughs> i know right <laughs> can i can i make a segment real quick no, no. <laughs> good this week's recommendation is uh is uh sunday conversations with uh caleb preston or presley or whatever if you've never seen those podcasts go check them out they're like three minutes long and they're amazing that's oh. my that's my segment i'm going to start plugging channels that everyone already knows about that's what i'm okay. doing i'm I've, I've did it it's done okay we'll All have right. this conversation later <laughs> <laughs> the segment never comes back but i did it <laughs> Okie dokie then. Twist, we're going to wrap it up there. We're back. losing Tristan, so we're going to wrap it up. So Bedtime and I'm hungry. Yep. Thank you, mm -hmm. as always, for checking us out. Thank you, Daniel, for sitting in today. Absolutely. Um, welcome anytime. Of course. Mm -hmm. we, we, find, we told him that and he thought that we recorded on Wednesdays, so <laughs> that's why yeah. this is the first. <laughs> yep. We've got lots of fun stuff coming up. We're recording another podcast very soon with a special guest and we cannot wait to get that one recorded and send it out to everybody um we've got a lot more segments and things to uh to expand upon and get better at so if you guys have any questions comments suggestions please reach out to us yeah uh we would gladly give you a shout out on the show or if you want to come on mm -hmm. let us know as well we'd be happy to have that discussion with you yeah. so thank you as always for listening check us out on youtube so you can see all the silly stuff we do while we're talking and uh Ooh. yeah i don't know have yes, a great day. Yeah. Bye. Bye.